In this video we'll see how we can install Warvel Sail, replacing the default uh, Docker container runtime with uh, Podman. Okay, let's uh, start installing uh, the pieces one by one. Okay, so we can actually install Warvel by using uh, curl and this will install our example application. I uh, will just uh, copy the string and paste it in the terminal. And let's try to run the command here. Uh, we see Docker is not running. That's because uh, we don't have Docker installed on the system. Let's see how we can circumvent this uh, limitation. First, we'll install uh, Podman. So I'll type sudo apt install Podman. And uh, after Podman is installed, we'll create an alias for it to replace Docker. So whenever we are typing Docker, it will run Podman. So I will go ahead and edit the bash rc file uh, so that uh, upon every new terminal or restart of the system i will have this alias uh, functioning all right so this is our bash rc and here at the bottom i'll place the following alias docker equals to podman keep in mind here we don't need to leave space between uh, two of the commands i'll save this uh, bash rc and uh, I can restart uh, the terminal or I can just type uh, source dot bash rc which will read the configuration and apply it for us. So now if I type docker we see that we are running uh, podman and we see uh, the, even the version of podman here. So this is one alias and let's try again now to run the installation of Laravel. At this point we can inspect this script in a browser to see what it's doing. I'll just paste the address of the script and we see that uh, first we have a check for docker and then we are running uh, this command that actually will install our application using composer and then using the sale it will install also the predefined uh, containers of MySQL, Redis and others. So that's the basic functionality and we can actually run it directly inside of our command prompt. So I'll paste the whole line here and I will let it run. And as you can see, little by little, Composer will install our project. Okay, now we can go to the example app directory. And uh, here we can see what we have. This is our bootstrapped code. Right from here, I'll run uh, Visual Studio Code in order uh, to see clearly the configuration files. So the most important files are the environmental file, also the sale file, which is inside of a vendor bin and then a sale. This is the Docker compose file and the Docker file is inside of the vendor and then Laravel sale runtimes. If you open this directory, we'll see that we have uh, three runtimes here. This means that uh, we can run PHP version 7, 4, 8 and 8.1 and they have their own docker file in order to build the container in the proper way. Basically when you are exploring the docker compose file by just changing here the version uh, you can have different uh, PHP environment based on this uh, docker file. So the file will be read whenever we are creating the container. Okay, this is uh, good for customization and installing uh, different, uh, for example, packages that uh, later can be used inside of the container. Now let's try to run our container with its configuration using the sail command. We will also need to install docker compose for the application to work. So I'll type sudo apt install uh, docker uh, compose and I have it already uh, here installed. Uh, so the next thing is to try to run the uh, sail up command. So from vendor uh, bin, I'll type sail up and this should start creating our containers one by one. I've already um, downloaded the images, so here the process is quite fast. But basically all the containers, as you can see, are being uh, created and uh, they are communicating between each other because we also have uh, networks uh, created inside and uh, they share the one common network. And now the benefit is that we are using uh, Podman as a backend runtime instead of Docker. 
which means that uh, the whole process will be quite fast. You can see even here the health check is running. Let's uh, browse now our application through the container. Uh, as you can see, the local development server is started on port 80. So we can go in our browser and try to see the result. So I'll go to localhost port 80 and we see the starting page of Laravel. Now let's try to reach our containers, for example, the MySQL from outside. We go to the terminal. And here we can check actually after the running of the containers what we have exposed in our machine. So we can type, uh, let's say, and map localhost. And we'll see that we have uh, MySQL um, with the port open. And this is our also web server. So let's try to connect uh, to MySQL. Okay, so it's not installed here. I'll install it on the MySQL client. So the apt install my SQL client and I'll use the client in order to connect to the container. Okay, so I'll type my SQL and here we need to specify the host on which containers are residing. So it's local host and now the user. And uh, let's see from where we can uh, get the default user and it's specified in our environmental file. So if we go to the environmental file, for the example app, we see that the username is sale and the DB password is password. And those actually are transferred to the Docker Compose file. And if we go on directly to where we are creating our MySQL, we see that for the environment inside of the container, and those are passed. So the DB username and the DB password from the environmental file are passed to the container. Uh, so in order to connect with them, we'll use sale and password. Now back to the common prompt, we will use uh, sale and uh, we will type the password. So here I'll type password and we are inside of the MySQL container. So uh, show databases, we see we have our example app and uh, so far it should be empty. But uh, that's basically how we can um, connect directly from outside of the container to it few more notes about the Docker Compose file. Um, actually, for the MySQL container, we are using a real volume uh, that maps to the varlib MySQL inside of the container. This means that uh, whenever we close and stop this container, it will retain the information that we have stored inside. And this is uh, here a named volume, uh, which you can see here defined the sale of MySQL under the volumes, or while our main uh, PHP runtime, which is a service named uh, valarovel.test, is using a mapping between the local directory and varv vhtml inside of the container. This means that we can uh, work directly on our Laravel and edit the files, and the container will just uh, run them for us. So that's the main difference between uh, the PHP and the MySQL container. And if you are willing to make changes here, for example, changing the version of the runtime to something else. Uh, in order for this to work, you need to type in the terminal sale build. So from vendor bin uh, sale, uh, you need to type build and this will reread the configuration and recreate uh, the containers. As you can see, uh, it uses a different Docker file. So all of our libraries needs to be fetched and uh, installed inside of the container and then configured. Okay, one more thing. We can stop the containers from running with Control C. If we would like to force the stop, we press again uh, Control C. I'd like to share two more tips. Um, if uh, sometimes your configuration changes are not picked up by uh, sale build, you can use the following longer command. So it's uh, Docker Compose up build and then remove orphans. Of course, this should be run from where your uh, Docker Compose file resides. So here we have it. So from the main uh, directory, this is the first uh, tip. And the next one is that sometimes if you type ID, you can see the user ID and the group ID to which the current user belongs. In our sale file, we see that uh, we are using the environmental past WW 
uh, W user and W, w, w uh, group. And sometimes there might be a discrepancies between those values. So you can hard code them inside of your environmental file based on uh, the output from the terminal. And this will allow those uh, values to be passed um, to our Docker Compose and uh, later to our Docker file uh, so that uh, we will have the same user with the same ID and group ID inside of the container as the user running outside of the container. And uh, this will solve a lot of uh, permission uh, problems. So this is the second tip. You can um, actually hard code the uh, www user and www group inside of the environmental file and then again uh, rebuild the whole uh, container space. Thank you.